it's a lot of work reading a math book. A lot of work. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of effort. You really have to want to read the book in order to read a math book because you're going to encounter places in the book, in any book, that you don't understand. You're going to get stuck because that is the nature of mathematics. Right? It's a tough subject. So when you're trying to read a math book, you're going to be hitting constant roadblocks. And sometimes you just you just have to move on because you won't you won't get it. And then you hope that you know what you've skipped is not going to hinder your progress going forward. And then you just keep pushing through until you can get through the whole book. And so that's one way to read a math book. Most people don't read math books. Um, this book here, I've actually read this entire book. I used this book for a course uh, as an undergrad. And then in grad school, I went back, I reread certain sections, I redid a lot of the exercises, and then I read additional sections. And I found that after learning everything in this book, I needed more knowledge. I needed to learn more abstract algebra. So this is definitely a beginner book. Let's take a look at this book because it's really great. It's called Abstract Algebra, a first course by Dan Saracino. Let's open it up. And this book has all of the stuff that you need to know as an undergrad um, who is trying to learn abstract algebra. Now, there are some topics that are missing from this book that you might need to know as an undergrad, but for the most part, this has um, all of the core ideas, right? It's got groups, it's got rings, and it's got fields. And it does a great job. It's got great explanations. It's got really good proofs. It's got great examples. It has good exercises. And you do get answers to some of the exercises in the back of the book. So that is cool. You don't have answers to all of them, and that is a huge con of most abstract algebra books because it's hard to find one where you get answers to all of the exercises. So, so here's the really the first section. It's on binary operations, and here it gives you the definition of a binary operation. It says, if S is a set, then a binary operation star on S is a function that associates to each ordered pair S sub 1 comma S sub 2 of elements of S and element of S, which we denote by S sub 1 star S sub 2. Right, so the new element is the star. You can call that S sub 3 if you like. Observe that the definition says ordered pair. Right, so the order uh, does matter. Yep. And then here they talk about addition. Is not is a binary operation on the positive integers, right? So is multiplication. Subtraction would not be a binary operation on the positive integers, right? Because you could do like two minus three, which is negative one, which is not a positive integer. So in order for it to be a binary operation, it has to always work, right? It has to be defined you know, via this definition. That's how, you, that's how we define a binary operation as a function. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And that leads into groups. So a group is basically a set with one of these binary operations. And there's uh, extra assumptions. Uh, the first assumption is that the um, set has associativity. So you have your set with the binary operation, and then you have associativity. Then you have to have a, an identity element here. It tells you there is an element E and G such that X star E equals E star X equals X for all X and G. And the next one is inverses. For each element x and g, there's an element y and g, such that x, y equals y, x equals e. Eventually, you stop writing the star, but it's kind of nice to write it when you're first learning. You're really aware of what's going on. There's an operation there. You know, does it make sense? You know, what, what's going on, right? So really cool stuff here, really nice mathematics in this book. And so this is like the intro section on groups. They have examples here of groups. Here's a set of uh, matrices that form a group. Let's see, consider the set of two by two matrices with real entries under the binary operation given by matrix multiplication. Is this a group? Oh, however, uh, you have to get rid of the matrices that don't have inverses because you need an inverse. 
So it says here, however, we can attempt to salvage something here by throwing away the matrices that do not have inverses. That's right. So you throw those away, and then you're left with that, that set of invertible matrices, and that will form a group because then every matrix has an inverse. That's a requirement in a group. Your elements have to have inverses. Yeah, here it tells you it is called the general linear group of degree 2 over R and denoted by GL2R. Right. You can use N instead of 2, so it works for um, you know, any N. So you can look at other matrices. Right here we're looking at 2 by 2 matrices. So you can look at N by N matrices. It's really cool. And there's all kinds of good mathematics here. Well, here's a uh, looks like a proof of the division algorithm. Yeah, lemma, the division algorithm. That's always an interesting proof. So they go through the proof here. It's a classic. It's worth you know like at least seeing once. Then you've got great exercises. Just a really great book. And I use this book again for a course and for self study. Um, the stuff I read for self study was mostly uh, CELA theorems. And then uh, let me show you the stuff back here after ring homomorphisms like way at the end, you know, because I just reviewed this stuff because I already knew that stuff. And so I had to like learn this. So like polynomials, I had to learn this on my own. I taught myself this. So this is mathematics that was purely self-taught, right, from this book. So I think that that's, that's one of the reasons I like this book. And I've learned math from other books, right? Um, lots of math from other books. But... I think when you learn math from a book like that, that you teach yourself, you, I don't know, you just appreciate it more, right? You just appreciate it more. Yeah. Cool stuff, right? Content. <laughs> Interesting. Eisenstein's criterion from polynomials to fields. This is section 20, 21, unique factorization domains, UFDs. And then we have... Suggestions for further reading. That's it, right? So it ends. And that is, you know, I, I kind of wish it kept going because it's such a good book uh, on abstract algebra. In my opinion, this is um, probably one of the best uh, beginner books um, out there for people trying to learn abstract algebra. There's other really good books out there. Other people use other books. Um, the book by Galleon is very good. It's a really good book. Uh, the Pinter book is really popular. People like that book. Abstract Algebra by Dan Saracino. So yeah, so the reading of the math books, that's, that's the answer. So try to keep that in mind when you're, when you're studying and when you're you know, trying to learn and trying to do mathematics. You know, if, if you struggle with the reading, realize it's okay, it's normal. Um, most people you know, don't read math books in their entirety. It takes a lot of time to read a math book from, from the beginning um, to the end. It's just an incredible amount of effort. Um, I, I had a friend who read um, Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Rudin. He read the whole book. It took him all summer. Um, and it was just really, really intense, right? So same here. This one, I came back and read it just because I needed to read it for something I was doing. And I needed to learn this stuff. And I did. Look at these exercises. Show that Q plus under multiplication is not cyclic. I think I have a video of that. Yeah, let x be a set with at least two elements. Show that the power set of x with the operation of the symmetric difference is an abelian non-cyclic group. Cool, right? That's pretty cool. Hmm. And here we have a 4.12. That's an interesting one, too. It says, consider this group here. With that operation, is the group cyclic? Interesting questions, right? Really nice. And really what's missing here is, again, answers. It'd be great if we had answers, but we don't. <laughs> so that is always the challenge with uh, reading math books. It's always a big one that makes things harder. Anyways, keep reading. Good luck. Take care.